Hey yo, I just pushed record and I'm here to talk to you today about storyboards. When I was young and new at stop motion and, and working with clients, I never knew what was expected of me in terms of storyboards. I didn't know what is the right thing to do for storyboards. And so over the past many years, I have perfected the art of the storyboard. And this is really what it comes down to. The purpose of a storyboard is to get what is in your head, the idea in your brain, and present that to your client in an easy to read way. Now here's the thing, with that lead in that I just gave, you probably think I have this dialed in way of doing storyboards that always does just that. But here's the thing, I don't. I have a lot of different ways that I like to do my storyboards for my clients, all depending on their needs. And I wanted to walk you through a couple of client storyboards that we've used and kind of show you how I use them and just kind of do a little walkthrough. But sometimes, let me just do like a quick preface. Sometimes, if it's internal, if it's something I'm doing just for myself, sometimes this is what a storyboard looks like. Sometimes it's just a one sheet, one paper, little image with a little bit of directions on the back. Sometimes, if I'm making something for myself that's a little more intensive, it takes the form of thumbnails. When I'm working with clients, sometimes it's illustrations. But storyboards take a lot of different forms. I've even had storyboards where I've written and it has been solely text, no imagery. Sometimes a friend will reach out wanting a video and it's a whole lot less formal. And it might be something simple like product, like white background, product enters, gives a wiggle, exits frame. That is so easy that you really can't get it wrong. <laughs> or you can be like, Product enters from left, wiggles when hit center, product exits to the right. And you don't really need to draw that out because it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so let me show you some of these storyboards and let's, let's go through them together. All right, I wanted to run you through a couple of different storyboard options um, that you can use to make your videos, um, whether they're for yourself or for clients. When I'm making them for myself, they're usually very low key. Something like this that might just be a one kind of thumbnail image um, with what I'm thinking with a couple of notes on the back. That's something I do for myself often. Another thing I like to do is I have a production notebook where I keep a lot of information on different projects, but I also have storyboard pages in it. So when I kind of have a more involved video on my mind, I can really block it out and add in some text. This is for an upcoming YouTube channel trailer that I really want to film. And this is kind of the breakdown of the shot. And then here I kind of have a breakdown of the voiceover and the needs for the shots. So this is all kind of internally helpful. Then another one I did on my own is in this notebook of mine. This is just a storyboard notebook that I filled for myself. And this has all of the information for a little cooking video, um, all about making popcorn. Then, another form storyboards might take is something like this, where the client actually didn't ask for a storyboard on this. This was done through an, um, kind of like, more like an influencer kind of agency, and they wanted me to post whatever I created to my Instagram, but they didn't really care what I created, as long as I used their product in a tasteful way and had fun with it. And so the storyboard was really internal. So this is more for me, the client was just kind of like, make whatever you want, just make us look good and have fun with it. So this is kind of like a storyboard that I created for myself to use. It has text, because they, they wanted to know just like a, a verbal breakdown of what I was gonna do. So I have that, and then I went in and sketched it for myself so I would know what I wanted to make. For Philadelphia cream cheese, the storyboard actually took a lot of different forms. In the beginning, before determining visuals, we actually had this kind of outline of what was going to happen in the video. Then, instead of taking the time to sketch it out piece by piece, because I knew that was gonna be really time consuming to get my idea across, 
I decided how about I just block out the animation and then send that over to them. And it was really helpful because it um, informed a lot of decisions that we were able to make to make the video even better. So let me show you that animation that we blocked out. So here it is, it's really rough. It doesn't look like a complete, fully formed animation. There's like bits and pieces copied and pasted in, and we're using, you know, the props that we didn't end up using. There's some similar props. A lot of things were changed, but what was great is that the creation of this brought some new ideas, like having a winter wonderland here, and um, just the styling changed, and things that we added changed. Uh, but it was all kind of dictated by this animatic that we created. And so it was really helpful. Okay, so I wanted to show you also what we did for Utah Air. I really wanted to break this storyboard down for you because I feel like it has a lot of useful elements. First, um, this is how I delivered the storyboard initially. And we were really aligned based on a lot of phone conversations that we had had that this ended up being also basically the final storyboard and what I used for shooting. This helped me internally. So I had the voiceover copy here, the action that the paper was going to take, a little thumbnail of what that paper was, what that paper illustration is, and then I left some space for me to list shots and take notes. And what was really helpful is I was then able to take this notes area into the edit, because I didn't, I didn't shoot everything from shot one all the way to shot 15, I shot them at different times. So like this big airplane scene, it was going to be really intense. So I actually shot it at the very end after I'd had all this experience shooting all these individual pieces. And so it was really nice to be able to do that. Also, we pre-produced the voiceover so I knew how long every shot needed to take. And I would write in, you know, this shot needs 10 seconds. This whole shot, which is actually um, a series of shots, sorry, this is in not the correct order, <laughs> which is a series of shots. This needs to take 20, oh, from, tw from second 20 to second 24, from 24 to 29, from 30 to 34, from 34 to 40. So I knew how long everything needed to take so that I could shoot it basically perfect and then lay it into the timeline and it would fit together really well. And then we wanted to also check on the timing to make sure that the timing felt natural. So we turned this illustration um, thumbnails into an animatic that was sent with the voiceover so they could see what was in my head and also hear how well the timing was. Around 40% of our pollution comes from the cars and trucks we drive. Nearly a third comes from our homes and businesses, furnaces, wood burning, even paints. 17% of emissions come from industrial sources like mining or manufacturing. Another form storyboards have taken for me is an actual, you know, thumbnail sketch of the storyboards in kind of a more colorful, true to what it's going to be shot way, but also very kind of loose sketches. <laughs> And with it, I will send kind of references to the props and the wardrobe, the background. Um, so here we have a whitewashed wood background. These are the hands of the hand model I'm going to be using, and this is the wardrobe. And I actually can't remember if we used, I think we ended up changing our background. This might be an earlier version of the storyboard that I'm showing you, but sketches and then with the text here at the bottom telling you what is happening throughout the storyboard. And then in the end, here are the props that we plan on using. Another iteration storyboards take, let me show you, is the photograph method. This was another, this storyboard was another example of, it was just easier to block it out and photograph it than it was to draw everything. I already had all of the props. I had everything that I needed to make this video but I wanted to really illustrate to them step-by-step step what it was going to be. So I photographed all of the steps so that they could get an idea of what that animation was going to look like. So there's another photographed storyboard. Now, one of my favorite methods of um, doing a storyboard is sharing an illustrated animatic. I recently did a video for Barilla 
and we were gonna be highlighting the chickpea rotini. The video needed to be six seconds long, and I illustrated this animatic and sent it off to um, the agency, and it ended up being basically what we filmed, so this is what that animatic looks like. So there were a couple changes for the final, but you get a really great sense of the animation that we created. Or you get a really great sense looking at this of the idea that was in my head and how that was going to turn into a final video. So there you have it. These are a few different ideas of how you can storyboard. Do whatever works best for you. I have a lot of friends that will um, take images of the props and Photoshop them into the environment and do kind of like a digital animatic or a digital storyboard. And I think that that's a very effective method as well. And I have done that in the past, but I hope that these just give you some ideas of some jumping off points when you're storyboarding, um, that it doesn't have to be one specific way, but that the goal is reached that you translate the idea in your head to your client effectively so that when they get a final video, they are not taken by surprise, that they knew exactly what it was gonna come to them looking like and that they are just pleasantly, not surprised, but pleasantly happy <laughs> that they got exactly what they asked for. I hope that look into how I create my storyboards is helpful to you in some way and hopefully takes out a lot of the guesswork that you might be feeling when working with clients, that there really is no right way and no wrong way to storyboard as long as you meet the goal that what is in your brain is being translated to your client in an easy to read way. I hope you have a great rest of your day and that this was helpful to you. Bye.